It's a 100% certainty we will be hit by a devastating asteroid, but we're not 100% sure when. That was a statement from the B612 Foundation in April 2018. Now with all our energy seemingly focused on the current biological threat, we shouldn't forget that there are other things out there that may well have our name on them and could pose an even bigger existential threat. But at least we are moving in the right direction and taking the threat more seriously and soon we will be testing for the first time to see if it is possible to redirect an asteroid the size of the Great Pyramid and weighing millions of tons with a spacecraft weighing 500 kilos. That's just a little bit more than the heaviest Harley Davidson. If successful, the results of which may well one day save us from a catastrophic asteroid impact. This video is sponsored by Magellan TV. Magellan is a new documentary streaming service run by filmmakers that have a passion for their work, which is something I can appreciate because in my own way, I do a similar thing. So I know what it takes to make something which is interesting, engaging, and something that you believe in. Be that about science, space, history, or nature. Magellan now has over 2000 documentaries available with more being added each week with a wide selection of those in 4K for no extra cost. And you can also stream them directly to your smartphone or tablet wherever you are. As the subject of this video is about saving the Earth from asteroids, then you might appreciate the upcoming Earth Day. And to celebrate, Magellan TV is showing Birth of Planet Earth. This looks at the remarkable history of how Earth survived the dangers of the early solar system and how it went on to become the only place in the universe that we know for sure where life exists. How did Earth become a living planet and what does that mean for our chances of finding other Earth-like places out there in the universe? You can watch this and many more by getting your one month free trial by going to the link for this special offer right at the top of the description below. And I know you'll find Magellan TV as worthwhile as I have. Just as we've been downplaying the possibility of a pandemic for years and then getting caught with our pants well and truly down, we've been doing the same with the possibility of a devastating asteroid impact, with the naysayers telling us that the threat is so small as it's not worth worrying about. But you only have to look at the Chelyabinsk incident of February 2013, when a meteor about 20 metres across and weighing some 13,000 tons came literally out of the blue and exploded with a force equivalent to a four to 500 kiloton nuclear weapon. That's about 26 to 33 times that of the Hiroshima bomb. And that was near the city of Chelyabinsk in Russia. Although it exploded at a height of about 30 kilometers, 7,200 buildings were damaged and about 1,500 people were injured over six cities in the area. This was the largest known natural object to hit the Earth since the Tunguska event of 1908 in Siberia. The worrying thing was that we knew nothing about it until it hit, because it did the old fighter pilot trick and came out of the direction of the sun. Also because of its small size, it had not been mapped and therefore was unknown. Although if it happened now, it would have probably been detected days or weeks earlier by NASA's ATLAS, or the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. We were lucky that the Chelyabinsk meteor was small and rocky and that it came in at a shallow angle, allowing it to break up and disperse the shockwave over a wider area. If it had been a metallic core asteroid and had come in at a much steeper angle, it would have hit the ground and done much, much more damage, even if it was the same size. Detecting these is one thing, but stopping them is another. We know about the planet killers because they are big, which makes them easy to track. It's the smaller 150 meter sized ones which pose the biggest threat. It's thought there are about 25,000 of these, about 8,000 of which are known. Their small size makes them difficult to detect, but if one were to hit the Earth, it would have a big regional impact, 
and could easily wipe out a large city and damage much of a surrounding area. This is where NASA's DART mission comes in. DART is part of ADA, the Asteroid Impact and Deflection Assessment, a cooperation between ESA and NASA with two spacecraft missions, NASA's DART and ESA's HERA. The DART or Double Asteroid Redirection Test will be the first time that we have tried to move an asteroid from its intended course. The thinking is that if we found an asteroid on a collision course with Earth, and if there was enough time, we could hit it with a kinetic impactor and push it very slightly off course. If it was far enough away in space, it would only need to change its course by less than a millimetre per second. Over millions of kilometres and several years, the cumulative effect would mean that it would miss the Earth completely. This method of giving it a bit of a nudge would be preferred to trying to blow it up with a nuclear weapon, as we could just end up with lots of small but still significant sized chunks that would just cause damage over a much wider area. The target for the mission is a binary asteroid called Didymos. This consists of the main Didymos A, which is about 750 meters in diameter, and the smaller minor planet moon or Didymos B, which has been nicknamed Didy Moon, and is about 165 meters across. Didymos will make its closest approach to Earth at 13 million kilometers in 2022. The smaller Didymos B makes an ideal target because it's just about the right size, and we already know its orbit around Didymos A, so we can measure what the effect will be when the impactor crashes into it. It's also worth mentioning that it's not on an Earth crossing path, so any changes won't send it suddenly hurtling off in our direction. NASA's DART is a cooperation between NASA and the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, and will launch in July 2021 with the impact date due in October 2022. The second part of the mission will be the ESA spacecraft HERA. This is scheduled to launch in 2024 and will arrive in 2027 and will orbit Didymos B to study its composition and internal structure, as well as the effect on Didymos B's orbit after the impact. The main part of DART is a 500 kilogram impactor, and in the final few hours, DART will be flown autonomously by the onboard computer using the SmartNav algorithm for guidance, navigation, and control. This will make use of a sun sensor, star tracker, and camera to look for Didymos B and guide itself for the final impact. It's thought that when it hits at 6 kilometers a second, it will change Didymos B's velocity by about 0.4 millimeters per second. DART will also carry a CubeSat from the Italian space agency called Licia. This will separate from DART two days before the impact and will take images of the impact itself and the ejected material plume to see if the velocity of the plume has an additional effect. Ground stations will continue to monitor Didymos B to see if the impactor has made a difference to its orbit over the coming months and years. The ADA project is also a test bed for a lot of new technology, from propulsion to autonomous control to laser communications between satellites and Earth. Once in space, DART won't be propelled by a conventional rocket engine, but by the most powerful ion thruster yet made, the NASA Evolutionary Xeon Thruster, or the NEXT C. This uses 22 square meters of a new flexible rollout solar panel system that can produce up to 6.6 .6 kilowatts of electricity to power the next sea engine. ESA's HERA will arrive five years after the DART mission to assess the long-term effect of the impact on Didymos B's orbit. Like DART, it will be carrying CubeSats, but this time two called Juventus and Apex. HERA will build on the Rosetta mission and use advanced autonomous control to guide itself to Didymos B, imaging it with hyperspectral scanning and LIDAR to measure the size and shape of the moon and the impact crater. The data gathered will be used to fine-tune computer models for future asteroid missions, both redirection and also for the possibility of mining them. The CubeSats will work together with HERA using a network system to completely map the moon. The second CubeSat, Juventus, will scan Didymos B with a monostatic radar to discover its internal structure, and towards the end of their mission, both CubeSats will attempt to land on Didymos B and use the onboard accelerometer and gravimeter 
to work out its gravity and surface properties. If all goes well, we will have a much better understanding of how well the impact method could work in a future scenario, not only changing the course of a smaller asteroid, but on bigger ones too, by maybe slowing or stopping their rotation and allowing the sun to heat up one side more than the other to create outgassing jets that would act as thrusters to change its orbit for us. So what do you think of the first mission to change the orbit of an asteroid? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell notification, thumbs up and share.